Hello everyone, this was a very simple chapter of One Piece. Kaido attacks Castle, Luffy attacks Kaido. We got the Kung Fu Dugons in the beginning of the chapter there in the cover, being trained by Koala, Black Belt Koala, to uh, be able to use Fishman Karate. And if there's one thing we know about these Kung Fu Dugongs that were introduced back in Alabasta, it's that in order for them to follow your lead, you need to be able to defeat them first. And I think the first page of this chapter pretty much confirms that Kaido is in fact uh, a mythical Zoan Devil Fruit user. Somebody who ate the Devil Fruit in order to become a dragon because you see like the very first page and it says Kaido has the ability or Kaido can transform into a dragon. And I'm mentioning this because I know a lot of people thought that maybe Kaido originally was a dragon who ate uh, the ogre fruit or the oni fruit, you know. But, it, it, I mean, the first page of this chapter makes it very clear that he actually, that's his power, that he can transform into a dragon. That's his ability. It's actually Kinemon who says that, and I think he's a pretty reliable source of information, given that he was in Wano 20 years ago. I mean, I don't see why he would lie, unless he's not aware of uh, the history of Kaido's powers. That being said, Momonosuke is just tripping, man. And then we kind of get another one of these expositional recaps of sorts from Law, which is, it's stuff that I feel like, like everybody kind of already knows or should know, but it's, it's a reminder, I think, to the younger readers about, yeah, hey, well, we messed with Kaido's business, and it all started back in Punk Hazard when we took down Caesar, and then moved on to Dress Rosa and took down Doflamingo. So this is like the domino effect. This is the chain of events that led us here, just in case you've forgotten, and uh, now he's pissed at us. And then Law also says that, thankfully, the only people who have been discovered have been Luffy, Zoro, and himself. So it's just three. So the rest of the Straw Hats should technically be fine because nobody knows who they are. Uh, and I think that stays the same even with the chapter's ending. Then he goes and says that if they can't get enough people, and I believe, according to Kinemon, it was uh, 5,000, that's how many people they wanted, then this whole alliance thing will essentially be pointless. So he's like, let me figure this out. And he goes and chases after Luffy by teleporting away and changing his location uh, by changing himself with rocks, essentially. And then Beppo's like, Captain! And I think, to be fair to Beppo, Law has been neglecting his crew a lot ever since uh, Zo, I think. Well, it's been longer than that, because, I mean, he left them in Zo to go to Punk Hazard, so. I like how Kaido's just flying around Okobode Town, just scaring the people half to death, looking for Shuten Maru. Where are you, thief? Then we have these characters that we've seen before looking up at the sky, to just, just, you know, glance at Kaido over there. And it's just, they're in different towns, but they're still looking up. That's how big Kaido is, right? So we have characters like Hawkins and Sudu and Holdem even, who's regained consciousness. And then Kaido finally finds Shuten Maru and he's like, I remember you. You're that thief that confronted me a while back. And we don't know how long ago this confrontation took place, but it's, it's pretty impressive on Shuten Maru's behalf because number one, he actually tried to fight Kaido and, and survived. Or at the very least, he tried to fight him and he didn't end up like Kid. Now in that same little flashback panel, we clearly see that Shuten Maru didn't confront Kaido alone. Uh, there's another samurai right next to him. And actually, that silhouette, the, the guy with the ponytail that we see there, fits the exact same silhouette that we got in the previous chapter when Kinemon was talking about recruiting three samurai. One of them being Ashura Doji, the other one called uh, Denjiro, I believe, and then the other one being called uh, Kawamatsu. So that guy in the flashback has to be either Denjiro or Kawamatsu. And again, we do not know how long ago this confrontation took place or why it even took place, but my gut feeling tells me that it was because Shuten Maru, aka Ashura Doji, was probably trying to protect Odin or avenge him. Now Kaido here is currently drunk, which, if I'm being completely honest, kind of takes away some of the hype that we got from the previous chapter going into this one. It just, it just takes part of it away. Granted, this is One Piece, so this is to be expected. And also, we already knew that Kaido had this quirk before. We saw him uh, just drinking, drinking this huge bottle of sake when he was reading the papers before. So it, it's kind of like the, the quirk of the Yonko. Big Mom had this obsession with sweets, and Kaido is just a raging alcoholic, apparently. Now here's the thing. This offer that he extends to Shuten Maru, uh, you know, asking him to become his subordinate, to, to forgive the past. I definitely see Kaido kind of doing the same thing with Luffy because he knows that Luffy is strong 
And even though he, he does have reasons to be angry at him, I think Yonko generally just kind of want to gather strong people under them. So even after this punch, after this elephant gun, I could definitely see him sort of saying, hey, Straw Hat, like, I, I know what you did. You have, you have every reason to get your ass whooped right now by me. I've read the papers and everything, but I will grant you this favor. Join me, and together we can rule the One Piece world. And of course, Luffy will obviously refuse because he's Luffy and he loves freedom and hates being told what to do. Not to mention that Kaido's kind of an asshole. Why isn't Jack chasing after Shuten Maru? He's just, he's just sitting there, you know, being bandaged up. I mean, he's worried that Kaido's going to destroy the town, but he's not doing much of anything. <laughs> like Hawkins has to run in there and, and, and tell him to, to aim over there. Aim over at the castle ruins. Did, did Hawkins actually know that that's where Law and Luffy were hiding? Because in his conversation with Jack, he just says that, yeah, there's been some, some weird rumors about that place with, with this light that starts glowing every so often. So that was probably just Kinemon going to the bathroom because he's had really bad diarrhea. Now, there's something very interesting that happens here off panel, and that's the fact that Kiku reveals something to Kinemon that we don't get to hear. Because as they're running down, uh, Kinemon is obviously heading to Okobore Town to try and save Suru. But Kinemon tells Kiku, go back. Go back home. You have to, you have to get back to some place. We don't know which place, but he gives her an order to just go back. And we know for a fact that Kiku has been hiding something ever since her introduction. So there's definitely something going on here with her. It's just that Oda doesn't want to reveal what that is just yet. Now, as we see Kaido making his way over to the ruins to destroy them, we see this giant door that, that's actually inside of the mountain. Like, you see, like, a, a giant door leading somewhere in, inside of the mountain. It kind of makes the entire thing look like a giant fortress of sorts. And I don't know where that door is supposed to lead or if it was supposed to be the main entrance to the castle and we kind of just went around it. But it definitely reveals something about this place's architecture that we didn't know before. Actually, I just checked the previous chapter and you do get to see a part of that door in the previous chapter as well. It's just a very minor detail that it's, it's easy to overlook because it's not, it's not front and center. Uh, and I'm only bringing this up mainly because if the Straw Hats are on top of the mountain and there's a door under the mountain, that probably means that there might be like some underground tunnels that they can use to escape Kaido's blast in this chapter. And I'm guessing Shinobu knows the ins and outs of the castle very well because didn't she kind of like suddenly just appear all of a sudden? So maybe there are some underground pathways that the Straw Hats could have used to escape. Because, uh, I mean, he destroys like the ruins. You see the, the gravestones, like Odin's gravestone just flying out into the air after the blast. Very impressive blast. The attack is called Heat Breath, and so I'm actually kind of curious about whether or not he can actually spit fire, like like one of the Western dragons. Do do Eastern dragons, like, are, is that what they're known for? Or is that just like a Western dragon thing? I don't know. But uh, I also find it very cool that as he's leaving the town, and he kind of just, you know, flies over Shutenmaru, he flies off like a snake, right? But as he's flying off, the air that he produces as he flies is literally lifting people off the ground. Like people are, are raised up into the air with, with the backlash, with the air that he produces. I don't believe that Nami or Sanji or any of their group, uh, you know, were, were killed or, or heck even hurt with this attack. Well, maybe they were hurt a little bit, but I, I don't think they're, you know, I don't think there's anything serious to worry about here. I mean, that's just kind of obvious at this point. There's a little kid that's pointing up into the sky in the last page. Uh, it kind of looks like Momonosuke, but I, I, I don't think that's Momonosuke. I, I just think it's a, like a random kid. Because Momonosuke, the last time we saw him, he was in his dragon form, okay? Plus he's like really scared of Kaido, so he wouldn't be pointing out into the sky like that. I think it's just like a citizen. And the reason for that is because this this attack, Luffy challenging Kaido like this is gonna, you know, help him gain more sympathizers. It's gonna help solidify his fan base in Wano. Because remember, People here don't know who he is because the news doesn't travel into Wano. So he has to build his reputation from the ground up and that's what he's doing. And that also goes back to, to the card that Kinemon had that kind of looks like Luffy's face in the previous chapter. Again, pretty sure that Nami and Sanji's group were able to escape safely. 
Kinemon gave them each an individual task in the previous chapter that they need to accomplish, so they need to be okay to be able to do that. That being said, I have to say it like it is, I'm a little bit disappointed that Luffy was able to land an elephant gun on Kaido so easily, but mainly I'm, I'm disappointed that the chapter ended with that being the ending. You know, I, I kind of wish we could have gotten an extra page just to see what that elephant gun actually did to Kaido, which in my opinion is probably close to nothing because, I mean, and if it did, wow, wow. I mean, granted, I know that he's supposed to be drunk and stuff, but let me say this, if that punch actually dealt some damage to Kaido, then what, one of two things, one of two options, either we need to start doing some serious damage control for Kaido next chapter, which I don't want to do because it's too early, it's too early on in the arc, for me to do that and for us to do that. Or number two, the Luffy wanking fest has officially begun. It's in full force if he dealt some damage to Kaido with this elephant gun. Again, we know that Kaido is drunk, so maybe his senses were dulled a bit, okay? But this is an attack that even Doflamingo could block, okay? Doflamingo could block it. Katakuri could outmatch it with his mochi, no problem. Now at one point during the wedding, this attack coupled with Sanji's Diablo Jamba did end up stopping Big Mom from attacking Reiju. Okay, I'm just trying to be fair. But at the same time, Big Mom was pushing away Gear Fourth attacks like it was nothing. So again, if, if this damaged Kaido, it'll be unbelievable. And, and we're gonna have a problem here. I do not like the excessive Luffy wanking that has been going on ever since he fought Katakuri and defeated him with brulees, flampes, and the Merienda's help because it's, it's almost as if Luffy has begun to get treated like a main character. The main character that should be taking W's every single chapter should be Buggy, and I don't like it when he doesn't. <laughs> On a serious note, though, we do know that Kaido has, like, this fetish for taking damage. I mean, his hobby is trying to commit suicide for crying out loud. So maybe in a weird and sick way, he kind of enjoyed getting hit by Luffy. I, I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Like, I, I guess, like, the bottom line is, I, I really hope that there are some consequences for, for Luffy doing this. For Luffy doing this to a Yonko in, in the early stages of an arc. There's still like a, you know, we know that there's like a, a period of two weeks that we need to prep for the final battle. So what I was hoping for was to be able to get a strength feat from Kaido in the next chapter and for Luffy to be like, oh wow, like so, so I can scale him thanks to this feat. So this is the gap between me and him or whatever. And I really need to pony up. I really need to get to work and start training my butt off during those two weeks that we still have left. Do you think he's gonna get trashed or straight up wrecked and then sent to where Kid is? And then maybe that's how we find out more about Kid's backstory and goals. And we also find out what happened to Killer and that's where the uh, Straw Hat Kid Alliance is born in jail. Again, let me know what you thought. Overall, very simple chapter. I mean, I think the chapter was just like straight up okay. Thank you for everything you do. Like the video if you did, I appreciate that. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so for more One Piece related stuff and comment with your thoughts and I'll catch you guys later. Thank you guys, bye.